I'm going to share my screen now. Um, Dr. Ling? Yes. You said to let you know if I needed extra time because of my um, medical issue uh, for the assignments that are due today. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this um, after the class and stay with me, okay? Okay. All right. Um, yes. Uh, just uh, I sent the email reminding you uh, the uh, assignment for chapter 18 is due tonight. All right, so all the uh, uh, assignments are from the book. So you, uh, you're you gonna follow the uh, uh, due dates and from the Rebel book. We started um, generics in chapter 19, last lecture. We're gonna finish it today. So we know the generics now. Generics is to parameterize data types. So we, when you write uh, uh, methods, you, you pass the uh, arguments, you parameterize uh, the, the values using the parameters. And so the parameters uh, have data types. The data types can also be parameterized. And so that's the generics here. So we introduced the syntax and the uh, generics and the examples for defining the generics for class and generics on the method level. And we have the uh, generics have the, uh, the, the using the syntax the question mark and that's the y cut and for uh, uh, any or there's a bounded and also there's a, a low bound uh, generics so all the syntax and we also have this uh, concept of this uh, raw type and for backward compatibility now we're going to uh, continue and to look at this uh, uh, this section erasure and restrictions on generics. So this is we're going to look at and um, how generics is handled by the Java system at the compile time and at runtime. So this is the uh, erasure means to erase it and restrictions. So there's some restrictions on generics and in certain cases, so you're gonna see uh, you're not going to, uh, you, to be able to use it. Uh, so uh, what is this erasure? Erasure is this, the information on generics is only used by the compiler at a compiler time. When you actually run the code, the Generic information is erased. So it is not used anymore. Um, so here, the reason in Java is for uh, the implementation is for the uh, backward compatibility. So the way we do this is only that compile time. At the runtime, it is not used. It's, it's we check everything at the compile time. At a runtime, we don't use it anymore. And this is, we have to do this uh, using this approach is for backward compatibility. So because anything you have, you have already developed, you should still be able to run the same way as now. So this is the uh, erasure. So let's look at some examples here. Now you're gonna see what at the compile time, so when you compile it, you have this, and this is the information, uh, generic information. So this is the list. It's the array list of strings. So the compiler recognizes it's array list of strings. So you're gonna add a string uh, to the list. So this is fine. 
And now and you're going to uh, get uh, the string element from the list. So get at index zero. So that is here. This is all okay. So this string, so there's no problem. Uh, the compiler says everything's fine. So use the compile time. All right, now what happens at the runtime? At the runtime, this is now uh, translated and into this. So it's lost. So this is the compile time. You have the generics. Look, you have generics. At the runtime, no, it's gone. It is not there anymore. So it's like you're writing this code in the old fashioned way before using generics. So you have this new array list. <clears throat> so this is the uh, raw type. So if you write the code this way, and so this is you're using a raw type, you can add anything. And then this is the uh, uh, element you have to cast into, into string for this. So this is, you will write it this way. Uh, think about it, the benefits of using generics. Yes, you can write the code like this and you can add anything. Uh, you can add Oklahoma, you can add uh, this is string, you can add a date, you can add a number. So, and if you write this code, you're not using generics, the compiler will not report any errors. But look, if you're using generics, the compiler takes this information and report error. So this is not what you intended. You intended this for strings. So you're not going to get any runtime errors. <clears throat> All right, but internally, so this is before you compile it. So this is, looks like this is the code. But after the compile, it's equivalent to this. It's this the generic information is erased. So here, that's erasure. It is. It's erased. All right. <clears throat> so here um, is another example here. Um, so this, you write a method like this with the generic type. So this is E. It's the generics. And so that's the code you write this way. But after the compile, and this is actually becoming this. No, it's there's no generic information anymore. All right, um, so they can have another example here. So this is the one using the, uh, the generics, and this is a bonded uh, generics, and E extends a uh, geometric object. So now after you compile it internally uh, at one time, this is what happens. There's no generics anymore. All right, so this is very important to understand the uh, language, the design, the implementation. And that will actually uh, help you when you write your code and debug your code. All right, um, so because of this uh, approach uh, used in Java for generics, so there's restrictions for this, you when when you write a code, you're gonna see. Hey, uh, first thing is this: if you write a code, you want to use this. So you 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 have this generic type e in your class. You're gonna you say, hey, I'm gonna create in, uh, this new e using the constructor like this way here. No, that's not going to work because this is done at runtime. At runtime, this E is lost. This information is lost. So it's not available. You cannot use it. So this is restriction, cannot use this. All right. You can look at other restrictions here. You cannot do this new. It's the same thing. It's anything you have a new, it's dynamic credit at one time. So you cannot use this. All right. So you can look at a couple of other restrictions as well here. So I'm going to let you look at it. <clears throat> after the class on your time. And now I'm going to go to this, uh, the next section. <clears throat> so now let's use this in a comprehensive uh, case study. So we're going to design generic metrics class. So we're gonna have the metrics uh, for integers, for doubles, uh, for rational numbers, for almost any number. And you can perform uh, metrics operation. 
So addition, uh, subtraction, and the uh, uh, multiplication. So all the things you can do is a lot of things for metrics operations. We're going to design it this way here. So we can design a generic metrics. And using this generic type, it's E. E extends number. So E can be any number here, E. So this is the root here, E. All right. So what do we have here? Well, uh, let's just simplify it. We're going to just have add and multiply. So you can have you know, subtraction. You can also even do other things like uh, um, uh, <clears throat> transpose and all this kind of uh, metrics, uh, typical metrics operations. But for simplification, uh, let's just have add metrics and multiply metrics. All right. <clears throat> so this is a metrics. It's a, a two dimensional uh, array. So here's two dimensional array. So matrix one, matrix two. So you're going to return new matrix, add together, and multiply this two, and you return new one. All right. So here, uh, what is this one on the line? We have a method here. This is a print result. Is you're going to print this M one, uh, M two with uh, this the result, and using this operator. So this is underlined and means this is a static method. It's a static method. So static method um, is not tied to any specific uh, object of this generic matrix. It's uh, uh, invoked just using the uh, class name dot uh, print result. So this is the uh, static method print, print result. All right, so um, when you look at, you're gonna implement this add metrics and you need to have um, this. How do you add individual elements? So this is the uh, it's it's a group of values in metrics, right? How do you have to add individual uh, metric uh, the elements? So we're gonna have this method add and multiply. So you when you multiply numbers, so you multiply the elements in the metrics, and also there's a zero. So representing zero in the this element. So this are uh, three uh, methods here on the elements. So these three methods, look at these three methods here. They are, uh, so what is this uh, UML symbol? Is italicized, means they're abstract methods. So the abstract methods, why this abstract? Because I don't know what the elements are. It is, if it's rational numbers, if it's complex numbers, so the way you do add is different from, you cannot just simply add it to using like integer or double values. So this is all depends on the real E is. So that's why it is now, it's abstract. All right, so this is abstract. And the whole thing, the, the, the class, is an abstract class. Generic metrics is an abstract class. <clears throat> uh, so now <clears throat> we're gonna design the uh, concrete uh, classes. Uh, we have integers, let's do an integer and uh, rational, let's do this here in the example. I'm gonna have this is the, uh, uh, so look, this is the uh, uh, the UML diagram and look, this right here is integer matrix is a subtype of generic matrix and rational matrix is a subtype of this uh, generic matrix. So this right here. All right, you can add more like a complex matrix for complex numbers and double matrix for double values. So this is all. All right, so we're gonna write the code now for this or this. So this is the code here. And this one here is the, uh, for this uh, generic 
metrics. Uh, any question? Okay, um, can you please turn off your uh, microphone? All right, <clears throat> so now <clears throat> we're gonna have this is abstract methods for adding two elements of the matrices, okay? So how do you write this? It's public abstract. So you're gonna write this abstract, okay? So abstract, uh, so here is E, so you're gonna return, so look at this, this one here, it's E here. So return is E, so the type is E. At, and this is E, E1, E, E2. And this one here is public abstract, E, um, multiply, E1, E2. And this is for zero, it's, so public abstract, E. Okay, so that's zero, the type is this. All right, so now you can do add. See how you do add? You can write this code for add. So writing the code for add and add metrics. So here, you're gonna check the bonds. And when you actually add, look how you do this. Invoking this method, add this. So this is the method is defined here, add. Here, this add. So this, look, this is add. So um, you add, all this to result, what is the result should be? Uh, result is this, you are getting this is the, uh, is the result. Okay. So the result, we're getting the result is this, is, uh, two-dimensional array, and for the returning uh, resulting matrix. So here is new, and this is, see, we cannot use this E. We have to use a concrete type here. This is number. So that's good for everything, number. So you're gonna have any number under this number class. So so this is the, this is the uh, size, matrix one dot length, and matrix one, this is the, uh, uh, two metrics, they have the same dimension, the number of rows and number of columns, the same. All right, so here, and look at this, uh, multiply. So how do you do multiply? So this is the uh, here. Uh, please read this code. And um, so you're gonna see this, how this is done. And this is the print, so you're gonna display it. All right, so now we're gonna write this as integer matrix. So here, we're gonna have this extends generic metrics for, now it's not int, you cannot have the int, you have to use a object type. So this is integer. So here, we're gonna to uh, overwrite this uh, integer, okay. Um, <clears throat> there's one thing here I want to mention to you is the uh, uh, using this appropriate uh, 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 visibility. Now, because this one here never directly used by the user, so I'm going to use protected instead of public. Okay, I'm using protected instead of public. Protected. Okay, and now here. And this, when you override this integer, so here 
I'm gonna have this integer, integer. So integer now, this is now integer. So this is now integer. So it's, you can still make it protected because this add is used only internally in your class. It's not meant for the uh, client to use it. So it's still protected. All right, so gonna, how do you add this to integers? Return 01 plus 02. So how do you multiply a two integer? Return 01 types 02. And what is zero value for integer? Return zero, that's it. So this is for integer metrics. Now let's for the metric for the rational metrics. So this one will be extends generic matrix. And here is the rational. So we have this class, the rational, and in chapter um, 12, um, 13. Okay. In chapter 13 of the book. So we already have this. Uh, so how do you add two rational numbers? And this is how we did it. Let's return uh, r1 dot add r2. So add, and this is the result. It's returned Russian. Number. So here, and for this multiply, return r1 dot uh, multiply R2. So this is defined in the rational class here. In the rational class, what is zero? It's return a new rational zero one. It's the uh, uh, numerator and here's the denominator. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna write a test program and we test uh, integer metrics. So we have the uh, integer uh, metrics. So here's integer matrix M1, M2. And here we're going to create uh, integer matrix. So now we're going to perform the matrix here. You can have this integer matrix. This is object here. Dot add. So add matrix M1, M2. So here, and this is integer. matrix dot multiply M1, M2. So here is the print result. Print result is here. This is M1, M2, the result. And here's the operator you're using. So it's print like this. This is the result. It's printed like this. It's printed like this. Okay. And for the Rush test for the rational matrix. You're going to uh, create a rational matrix. So this is the create this. This is to create this two rational matrices, uh, uh, matrices and then initialize the values here. And so this is just to put some values here. And then you can and create a rational matrix. And then using this here is, is this uh, rational metrics dot at M1, M2. So. Okay, um, I think that's all. And for this chapter, and we're going to uh, uh, start uh, to introduce data structures in Java in chapter 20 next week. So we're gonna get into, look at all the data structures and see how we're gonna use all the data structures uh, from the Java API. All right, um, so any questions? Uh, please stay, you got questions. You, uh, otherwise, uh, feel free to leave. Thank you. Thanks.
Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Uh, I had a question about generics. I was wondering, like, it seems like you could just use generics all the time and like never actually specify return value. Like, what's the the benefit to not using generics? Uh, can you give me a specific example where you're talking what question is best? Um, Which one? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I'll see if I can find one. But just in my head, it seems like you could just use generics for everything. Like you Not need it everything. It's uh, generics. You can see that it's using data structures in the uh, way you define like a class, uh, like array list of strings array list of integers. So in that sense, you have this generic type. It's not everywhere. It's 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 only when you have data structures. Yeah, all, okay. only makes sense. It's only, uh, there's some other situations you can also use that's not everywhere. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I have a question about the, um, the assignment due today, question four. Uh, which uh, which one? Oh, uh, question you... question four, project eighteen. Oh, okay. The end of the uh, so here, right here, the program project. Yeah, question okay. four. Four, okay. All right, so let's go there. Look at this four. <clears throat> Here's four. Okay. So uh, this is to get the occurrences of a specified character in an array. All right. So here we have this is already given to you. Uh, There's two uh, uh, methods. So this is a count. You're gonna count uh, the character here in this array, the occurrence. So here, the example here. So you have, this is the, uh, uh, this is the, uh, here, you enter a string. You're gonna put to this uh, test. You can, you put the string into this, this is the, uh, um, the array, okay? Yeah, and, yeah, you can skip, you okay. can skip the, um, the string, just the, um, the method in the, yeah, the methods. Yeah, look okay, at the methods here. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, this is the uh, helper method here. So here you uh, write this right here. Okay, uh, I'm going to just uh, look at this. The, uh... Because um, when I look at the int uh, for the person, um, I didn't understand like what they did. They were using uh, like a, a question mark. So this they did uh, for the helper method, they did like uh, if i is less than zero, return zero. That's the base case. I think if not uh -huh. if uh, if, uh, if there's nothing in the um string, if it's an empty string or something like that, return um zero in the character. Else they did a recursive call of um calling the um, method again for reducing i by one. But they actually made i the length, the last yeah, index. Um, I think you have to do something like this. I'm gonna show you here is, first okay. thing is this one here. That's, uh, I'm gonna see if I can just put things code right here is. Oh, uh, okay, I, I have the code. Can I just share my screen so that I can just explain it? Uh, Probably here, just uh, let me do this fast. So because it's, it's other people is here too. Um, so let's look at, okay, uh, this way here. Um, I'm gonna show you, see if you have, I'm going to write this here, okay. All right, um, so here is, uh, let's still, I'm still gonna write this here for public class. Uh, exercise 18, 17, okay. All right, and then insight. So you're gonna have a main method, okay. Yeah. All right, so this is public, uh, static, um, 
Exploit. Man. Spring back. It's like, okay. All right. So you're going to have things here. Okay. And now this is the one here. You're going to copy and paste here, here, this one here. I'm going to copy this one here. So here is, you're going to write the recursive method here for this. Uh, what you need to do is this, return cont, and here's the characters here, right here. And this is, this is the array, and this is this character. And you have this is, is the uh, uh, the high index. So here's the high index is characters dot characters dot length minus one. Okay, now what is this? This the uh, the second one here. The second one is right here. This is the key right here. When you write the second one here, it is like this. And this one here. All right, so here is the key, the recursion here, this part. So when you do this part, so think about this is, is, um, see if I can get a little more. Here. Huh. Okay, um, all right, here. Yeah. So you can write if this high, the index right here. So look mm -hmm. at the index. So if high is zero, you're going to return zero. Count is zero. Yeah. Okay. Else, you're going to have a reduction. So else, this is what you're going to do. Else, Okay, so um, so else <clears throat> you're gonna return. Um, this is the uh, um, so we're gonna compare the last character here. The last character you can write something like this. Return the last character. So you're gonna check on the last character, characters. This is the array. So what is the last one's high? If this one is equal to this character, mm -hmm. okay, it's one. If not, it's zero. Okay, plus, not. So the same thing here, here, but now it's high. Minus one. Yeah. So, you, so you, my you take care of the last last to the uh uh character in the array. So my my um my point is you said if if the character is, if um is the, the last character is equal to the character it's one or it's yeah. zero. Yeah. Plus you recursively calling the method again. So That's how right. do you how do you keep track of the um, count of the addition? Like it's, because, it's right no... here. because you see what what is what is changed is this one here changed. This it's you start with high, now it's high minus one. So it's yeah. keep, keep getting down. So high minus two, high minus three, and eventually yeah. you have this is high is less than zero. If high is less than zero, so this is over, it's return zero. That's the best case. So what about the uh, the addition? Like, how do you keep track of the addition when it's one and then it adds, and if it's zero and it adds? Like, there's no variable. So like, that's keeping the additions as we recursively invoking the method. Yeah, that's, you, you have the recursion takes care of this. Yeah, it's going, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am.
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah, I'm saying when um when the character is equal to one or is equal to zero, and yeah. then and then we well, it's character not equal to one, equal to zero. Character e equal to this character right here. This is the uh, this is the array at index high. It's equal to this character. Return one or zero. Yeah, yeah return one. That's a count. That's that's how many the occurrence you in a count at, right? It it's it's it matches. So you count it as one. Yeah. So uh, how does it keep track of the addition and then returning it at the end? Like when it is one and then it what, all what, is the, what is the addition? What are you talking about? Addition, this right plus? Yes. Yeah, this is the plus. It's it's because you have two parts. You have you have the last the character in the array. So you you look, see if this is a match. If there's no it's match is one if it's not match is zero. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. about the second recursive call? Okay, you can rewrite it the code like this. If you if you this bothers you here, you write this. If this character here is a match, mm -hmm. okay, and then you're gonna return one plus and this. Okay? Oh, so it's just gonna one. be one plus yeah. zero plus else, zero. Else, else what you're gonna return? What what I have to write? Write what? Zero plus. Else you yeah, zero plus. Zero plus you don't have to write zero, it's just this. Okay. Okay, so at the end of the um the last recursive call, we have uh, one plus zero plus one plus zero, and then it adds everything up and then returns it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Anything else? Um. So remember. Yeah. Nothing. Um, that's fine because you you are being a, a, a um, sick last week, so yeah. um, I'm going to uh, 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 extend it for you. Um, so for another week for you uh, next Friday. Is that okay? Yeah, that that would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good. Thank yeah, you. I will do that, and you're gonna see the difference. Uh, I'm gonna set it up for you. Just. After this class, I'm going to uh, uh, do the, yeah, change the due date for you, okay? Yeah, because I've finished about half of them, but I don't think I can finish the other half by the end of the Okay, day. no problem. And so I'm glad you're back. And uh, so you uh, you have all the videos you can watch yeah, to catch it up, okay? Thank you. Bye. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, anybody else? Hello. Uh, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to uh, uh, leave now.